Welcome to Mum's Half Hour, the show that gives you the chance to discuss, share and explore the issues which matter to you. Hello and welcome to Mum's Half Hour, I'm Liz Spate. Now then, if you haven't logged on before, the second Friday of every month for the next four months is just for you. Mum's Half Hour, a chance for you to enjoy the conversation and thoughts of other mums and let off a little steam on the issues which really matter. This series is fully interactive, so you can get your questions and comments to us right now and we'll receive them live in the studio, or you can submit them in advance of every show and the Mums Half Hour team will ensure we tackle as many as possible during the course of the show. We'll also be giving you the opportunity to win a year's supply of Start Right shoes for your children in each and every episode. Today we'll be discussing back to school and we're not just talking about what your kids need in their pencil cases. Separation anxiety, how do both you and your child cope? And shopping for those all-important school shoes. Now, I'm afraid two of our mums couldn't be here today but luckily enough answering the mums half hour call and joining me today to discuss all of this and more are mum of one and soon to be mum of two, Robin Bayliss. Looking blooming. Thank you very much. Welcome, very, <laughs> welcome to you. Mum of three, Jessica Brighty in the middle there. Hello. And uh, mum of four, Janine Moore. Ladies, welcome and well done on making the panel. Really great to see you today. Now, don't forget, this is a live show. So if you have any questions or comments for our panel, please use the box on your screen, click send, and we'll do our best to tackle them over the course of the next 30 minutes. When submitting your question, let us know whose shoes you'd most like to walk in for a day and why. Leave us with your contact details and one lucky viewer will be in with a chance of winning a year's supply of Start Right shoes. I'm surprised definitely that's worth having. And if you're tweeting whilst watching the show, you can get involved with the conversation by using the hashtag Mums Half Hour. So let's start by talking about getting ready for going back to school. Those six weeks, those long summer holidays, are well, they're pretty much halfway through now. We're coming towards the end. Um, we get into a bit of a bad routine. I know we do in our house. Kids going to bed late, waking up late. How do we get back into the routine? Jessica, are you looking forward to September back to school? Yeah, I am kind of, well, you know. <laughs> um, yes, I am quite looking forward to them going back to school. But obviously everyone's had a lovely time in the summer as well, so... But in terms of getting everyone ready, I think um, trying to get people to go to bed on time and waking them up on time yeah. is a good way to start. You've got three children. How old are they? Three children. Well, uh, the oldest is nine, um, the middle one is five, and he's been at school since uh, January. So he's going... Oh, okay. So he's, so he's going it's his first the... September, yeah. really, and the youngest is two. Yeah, and have you got any bad habits over the summer, letting them stay up late? Well, they do stay up late, um, especially the, my daughter. Um, and obviously then they sleep in and uh, for school, even though we live just around the corner from school, it's always a last minute dash. And at the moment, when they're rolling out of bed at 10 to 9, yes. that would be a bit tight on a school day. So, <laughs> But you'll get there. So maybe a week before you start getting them back into the routine. I, I think so, yeah. I think the sleeping thing and the getting up and having breakfast thing is, you know, is the most important, really. Yeah, and we know they're listening. So kids... Take note, all right? <laughs> <laughs> all right, moving on to Janine. You've got four children, haven't you? That's Tell right. us a little bit about them. Uh, my, my eldest is uh, tw 22. Um, second eldest is 18. Um, my third, third, third eldest, I, I forgot, forgot to say that the first two are boys. Um, okay. my, my, my daughter, Gemma, is 11. And my, my youngest son, Jeremy, is 8. OK, so how do you get them back into the, the school frame of mind? Well, similar to uh, Jessica, really. Um, it's... I think the, one, one of the main themes is um, bedtime routines. Again, it, I think through, through, through the end of the holidays, it can be a little bit hit and miss, depending on what you've been doing during the day. But yeah. if you can try and gradually seep back into an earlier bedtime, earlier rise, um, and start to talk about school again and start yes. getting that back into the conversation and thinking about their friends and um, getting their, their sort of school frame of mind back in, into their heads and sort of... You know, think, think, thinking about it again. Yeah, preparing. Because yeah. six weeks yeah. is a long time for them to, to not be at school, actually, isn't it? It, it seems exactly. like a long time at the beginning, but it, it yes. does go quite quickly. But they're in a completely different yeah. place. And it's a lot exactly longer for them than it is yes, for us. Yes, it is. I think so, yes. too. Even though some mums might argue with that at the yeah. end of the holidays. Yeah. But yes. they've almost forgotten about school, I think. Exactly, exactly. That's but right. I suppose 
thinking ahead is, is a good a good thing, isn't it? I um, think so. Robin, you've got a little girl already, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, my girl's about to turn two next month, so okay. school's a few years away yet. Yeah, but possibly, she's, thankfully. She's nursery, isn't she? <laughs> yeah, she's gone to nursery since she was about nine months old, so and she goes twice a week. Seems to really enjoy it, from what I can tell. Yeah. But um, but yeah, similarly, we went on holiday this year for a couple of weeks, and then it was sort of getting her back into the routine of doing that. And yeah. uh, yeah, because obviously on holiday, bedtime slip and, and so on. So, uh, yeah, we had a sort of similar experience. And, uh, yeah, the first day she came home absolutely exhausted. Yes. And I think, yeah, when they've been used to different different hours, that can be a bit of an issue. But, uh, yeah. yeah. So and you're going to have quickly. another one to deal well, with. Well, yes, so really can you tell? <laughs> I've got a month to go. Oh, OK. So, well, you're yes. looking very well. Well, thank you. So their birthdays might well be on the same sort oh, of day. Yes, yeah. And, and how about not. getting out of, of, of the house when you've got, you know, a baby as well? It's a... Bit of a struggle, isn't it? Yeah, that's going to be a challenge. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? Am I, I'm, am I looking forward to it? I'm not sure. It'll be fine, I hope. Um, yes, I mean, well, one thing is my daughter does get up very early, so we do have plenty of time to get her ready in the morning. Right. So, yes, I, I organisation is is key. I mean, would, yeah. would you agree, ladies? I mean, getting back yes. to school. I know I'm a bit of a one for a last minute, mm. quickly trying to get all their PE kit together. I must mm. do it earlier this year because I was hopeless last year. That's I right. mean, what about school uniform? thing? when do you start shopping for things like that? I um, normally give it sort of two weeks before the end of the the. Um, the school holidays. Yeah. If, if, I find if, if you go too early, sometimes they they sounds silly, but they may grow out of it. Yeah, absolutely. Or start to grow out of it before before the school starts. Yeah. Um, and uh, there's, there's often other things going on as, as well around the first start of the first area of the holiday. So I, I find at least two weeks before start thinking about uniforms, shoes, getting the pencil cases and, and the um, pack lunch things together. Oh, because yeah, pack lunch. I always find that. They'd love to choose their own lunch boxes. If they've yeah. got their little characters on that, their <laughs> favourites from television, then that that keeps them happy. It's something to share their friends, you know. So, yeah. And what about yeah. pat lunches, night before? What happens in your house? Um, yeah, usually the sort of the, the night the night before we'll we'll get part of it ready, and then I'll, I'll, I, I, actually on the morning um, that's just the sandwiches to make up. I like to make them fresh, but everything else is already in the lunch box, the little drinks and all the little. Yeah. Snacks and things. I had yeah. a friend, this is a really funny story, I had a friend who used to make the sandwiches for the week and put them in the freezer and she had a really? call from the uh, school, um, your child's got frozen sausages in their lunchbox <gasps> and they started eating them. <laughs> so the day, make them on the day, maybe that's, that's the best, best. Thing to do. I won't name you friend but you know who you are. <laughs> so what about things like to do during the school holidays like hair, cuts, dentists, that sort of thing. Jessica, have you, have you done all that yet? Oh no, I, I should have done it. Now, now you're, you're sort of pricking my conscience about it. <laughs> Still time, don't panic. <laughs> um, no, I mean haircuts. We have we actually have someone who comes to our house, oh, and that's she's handy. she's already booked to come. So everyone's looking a bit sort of shaggy. Uh, but you're booked, so that's but, good. So, that's you know, organised. They'll be, they'll be neatened up before school starts. But what we were saying about the uniform, I think that's sort of all part of the kind of easing them back into school. If they're mm. trying their uniform on to see if it fits, then it's mm. just kind of. Remind them slightly that that's coming. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, on, on that note, actually, we've had a, a question or a comment in from Sarah Parker. She says, so how do you reassure and encourage your child into school when the novelty of the first day or week has worn off? Um, yeah, I had that with my little girl, actually, first year at school last year. Um, and the first week, she just breezed in, absolutely no problems or no tears or anything. And I was more mm. in tears than she was. And then after the first week, it suddenly dawned on her that she was going to have to go all the time. How do you cope with that? That's never easy. No, I, I think um, some of the kind of thing about playing and, and seeing mm. their friends, I think yes. that's quite a, a strong During the motivation. Holidays. Yeah, I think yes. so. I think once school started again, if, they, if they're a bit sort of grumbly about it, then I think there are, particularly when they start in reception, which is really just playing all the time anyway, I think mm. yeah. you can kind of remind them that how much fun they have at school and yeah. that they'll get to do lots of the things that perhaps you wouldn't do so much at home, like yeah. painting and the yeah, exactly. messy mm. things. Yeah, exactly. And, and they, all they the love nice their toys friends, they don't have. they? Yeah. Nice. Our, our school's very organised, or one of the mums is, and she's organised all these sort of picnics um, once a week, a different day of the week, different time, different place, so that the kids can meet up in the holidays, which I think is a really nice, yeah, idea, yeah, nice. Good idea. Six weeks, you, they've kind of forgotten mm. who they are, haven't yeah. they? Yeah. That's, no, right. that's a good idea, meeting up with friends. Um, but it's a bit of a shock for mum too, isn't it, going back? Never mind the kids. It's sort of <laughs> that first day when you come back, and um, we're going to be talking about this a little bit later on, when you come back and there's just a quiet house. It's We've got to get that's our right. own heads around it as well, haven't we? We do, don't we? Yeah. Another question in um, from Helen. She says, every year my son, who's seven, gets in a tears about his new teacher, but every year it's OK. How can I help him overcome his fears? They do this, don't they, new teachers at schools? 
Any, uh, I, any I think tips? so, because I think when they're little, they kind of fall in love with their teacher a bit, don't yeah, they? It doesn't really matter. Yeah. You know, the parents are kind of thinking, and all yeah. the kids are like, oh, he's so lovely, or oh, he's so lovely. But I, I think it's just the new thing, isn't it? It's not yeah. necessarily about the actual teacher themselves. But in terms of how you reassure them, I, I guess you, you try and encourage them to, re to realise that they will get to like the teacher. Yeah. And again, maybe just focusing on the thing about their friends. Yes. That's and right. and they, they will get through it. You've just got to keep talking them through yeah. it. And the other teacher's probably still there at the school as well, so they probably that's will still right. see yes, them, Yes, that's true. They? You could wave right. them in the corridor or something. Yeah, that's right. It's always, it's always, always, always good to have a, a good um, um, talking relationship with, with the, the, the child's teacher so that they, they get to know your child better, they get to know you better. And it's, it's always, always good to have... Um, you know, plenty of chats about and any even if it's a small problem to you, you know, your 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 child can can think it's an enormous problem, even though it, it's it's a minute. Someone just said something in 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 the in the playground that they didn't even mean it to be harsh. If you you just let your te your child's teacher know, yeah. then they're aware of what's going on. They're generally it? very good, aren't they? Yeah, at, they're at very that. good. They do take things on board. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Another question in um, from Becky McMichael. Uh, does it matter if young kids miss a bit of school because of a holiday? Ooh, contentious issue. <laughs> now, Robin, what do you think about this? Are you going to take your little girl out of school for holidays? Well, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Yeah. I remember being at school and being taken out of school to go on holiday yeah. once or twice. And it's not done you any harm, has well, it? Well, <laughs> <It's very dry. laughs> I like to think I've survived. <laughs> I don't know. It's difficult, isn't it? Because the cost of holidays goes up so much when you get to a school holiday. Yeah. And I, I guess when they're, a bit, when they're young enough, maybe it doesn't matter too much. Like you mm. say, when they're in a reception, it's just playing. Mm. And maybe they'll be learning more on holiday with you and getting all those new experiences. So I'd probably say I would do it, yes. mm -hmm. but I don't know. I might yeah. be wrong. Well, no, <laughs> the schools, they don't thinks. like it. The well, schools, no, do they? they do but clamp it, down. When mm. you've got four children and you're taking yes. them in turn time, oh, it can it's be quite thousands. expensive when, mm. when, when, when you're, you're going in, in high season. But I'm a school governor as well, so I, I know the problems <laughs> that it can cause on the other end, so yeah. I, mm. I have to balance it out knowing the problems that that schools have getting their, uh, their their targets for attendances as well yes. and what problems it can cause. That there's almost a pressure put on children as well, because mm. certainly at my children's school, um, children who have 100% attendance are rewarded. Yes. And there's That's this right. character Spike who goes around sort of, you know, yeah. slightly brainwashing them about how important it is to turn up every yes. day. Yeah. Even children who are off sick don't get 100% attendance, so they don't yeah. get the certificate and they don't get the, um, yes. you know, the kind yeah. of that sense of, of feeling rewarded for it. They, they don't want you to take them out, but, you know, yeah. I think it is personal choice, isn't it? I mean, yeah. if you simply can't afford to go on holiday exactly. during the holidays, and, I mean, it is yeah. a nice... It can be an educational thing yes, going away with your children, can. and it's I good for so. families, yeah. isn't it? I guess yeah. the only thing is when they're, when they're just starting school, they probably, they probably would notice the kind of gap would might kind of set them back a bit, and they might return to school slightly disadvantaged because... Mm -hmm social groups have formed while they've mm. been away if you were going to do it when your kids had only just started yeah, I guess that's right. yeah. yeah but kids do like to do things in the holidays and they like to do things with families but money is often a problem for families isn't it we've had a, a mm. question from Charlotte um, who I presume is a, a child rather than a parent yeah. she says what if my mum promises me she'll take me to Splash World and she don't <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't do it. So it's a problem for mums, isn't it? You try and do all these yes. things in the holidays, but sometimes you just simply can't get around to things, can you? No, there's lots of juggling going on. Um, you know, it's not it's not always easy getting getting it right every time. I'm, I'm, nobody's perfect. We don't always get it right, do no. we? But, you know. We do our best. Sometimes you can make a compromise. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. there's kind of pacing yourself as well, because yes. what usually happens to me is that I look at the calendar and, the, and it's completely blank and I panic slightly and then I sort of over-organise yeah. so that we don't have enough days where everyone's just, just hanging, hanging out, out mm. in their pyjamas and not doing much. I really agree with you. I'm a it's, real it's victim mm. of that. But yeah. you try and see everyone in the holidays, though. You've got to see your family and your friends. And, oh, just too much to do, isn't there? Anyway, moving on. Join us after the break when we dis we'll be discussing separation anxiety. <laughs> Welcome back. Now, let's move on to another subject now, separation anxiety. First day at school, first day back at nursery. Can be difficult for the child and the parent. Robin, how did your little girl cope? She was fairly young, I think, compared to some children who go to nursery. She was about eight or nine months, right. which 
I think was much harder for me than it was for her yes. to be honest because obviously she was she was so small and it was the first time I'd been away from her for such a long day I'd what I'd done sort of in the in the lead up to actually settling her in was I got my mother-in-law to look after her for a day or two or half a day just to get myself used to it as much as anything else because yeah. she's quite a sociable little thing and yeah I do think I was worried about her as, as, as much as I was worried about me and I must say when I sort of left her at the do at the door for the first time I did there was a tear in my yes, eye but yeah, I think um, we've all been there haven't yeah, we yeah but she, she's been absolutely fine but I think especially with nursery they, they have a sort of program of, of settling them in and, yeah. and so I went in for you know the, I think the first time was an hour then it was three hours and then it was half day and then it was the full day so yeah. and when you're at work do you find that you just don't really think about them because I know that's what I'm like honestly my bad mother. yes no I don't think, <laughs> no I don't think about her because I know and now she's just about old enough to tell me that she enjoys it yeah. I've known all along that she's enjoyed it because it would have been quite obvious that she wasn't yeah. but I think, no, I, I don't think about her awfully, no. I do have friends who do phone up sort of three times a day oh, and check no, on that's theirs. Healthy, but, is it? No. but no, I, I kind of think if there's a problem, they will let me know. So, yes, it's fine. But <laughs> I think, yeah, no, I think we both get, I think she gets a lot out of it and I, of course, get to have, you know, a day at, perhaps at work, which I, I consider to be a rest, really. Yeah, I know, exactly. Having it we never old. used to, did we? But now we do. I know, there we go. And, and how about uh, the, the other mums then? Um, Je Jessica... How did you get on with that sort of first term um, last year then when, when you're... Um, well, it, they, he started later, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he started so, in January. Yeah. Um, How did he get on? Well, they, the, the settling in at school is very, was very, very gradual, so they only did mornings. And yes. he'd been at preschool for three mornings a week anyway, so he was quite... He didn't find, uh, didn't find any problem with that and was itching to stay for lunch, really. Yeah, oh, that took sort of, you know, longer than he, he would have liked to, really. He couldn't wait to stay for a school dinner. Um, <laughs> But even really, when when he went all day, he was he was fine about it. Yeah. But there were there were children in his class who weren't and who were unhappy. Yeah. And I think it's really hard to anticipate what your child's going to be like. Yes. So I think you have to kind of play it by ear. I think it's you know you need to listen to what they're saying. And the teachers are usually really sensitive about that. I yeah, think. And are. some children, the teachers would let the mums come into the classroom, sit on one of the weenie chairs for yes. ten minutes, and then sort of slip away. Yeah. So and I think that they, it hits them at different times as well. I, went, yeah. I know my daughter towards the end of term gets really clingy to me um, because she's getting really tired. And they, they, they learn so much, don't they? Mm. And they've got such a lot of sort of concentrated on being good to, yes. to do that when they come home, they can be actually a bit of a nightmare. Um, but sometimes she'd be clinging to my leg and I'd have to sort of peel her off and put her in the class. And you feel awful then, but they've got to go, haven't they? You know, right. They've got to go. It really can make, make you feel quite guilty at, at, at times, really. Yeah. yeah. But, um, I find that when you're when you're you're first getting the child into nursery or or, or the, the first term in school, is it may sometimes be hard for you because you're you're feeling nervous about it. But it's it's, mm. it's easier for them if you don't pass the nerves down, yes. and to them if if they feel that you're confident about it and you're happy that that they're going to make friends and and you you make it into a happy experience by saying oh this is this is great and not sort of letting them see the tears and mm. sort of hide that side from, from them until, until after you've closed the door, then you can burst into tears. It, they won't see it. <laughs> yeah. And it, there yeah. is such a thing as sort of separation anxiety for parents as well. Yeah, because that's it, right. it is, yeah. it's sort of almost like an empty nest. I mean, I touched on this earlier, but because yeah. I only have one child, um, coming back to the house when there's nobody there, when yes. you've had such a busy house. So anyway, mm. I've got a dog now, so I'm yeah. all right. But, <laughs> so I'm not I've on my own my anymore. house up that way too. Yeah. You've got my dogs as well, no have you? <laughs> I've catched dogs and chickens now. <laughs> but I mean, it, is, it can be a big problem for some uh, children. You know, they, they, the thing is, it manifests its way in different ways, doesn't it? Like they might have tantrums yes. or, or nightmares. Um, mm. Any sort of tips for, for parents whose, whose kids are um, struggling with it? I suppose days out with grandparents to start with, to mm. you know, get them used to not being with you is, is a good way of, of, yeah, of and dealing I've, with that. Yeah, I've always found, I mean, obviously my daughter's quite young, but I think I think she has always understood that if I've sort of prepared her for it and sort of said, right, tomorrow we're going to do this, and then yeah. in the morning, then I'm like, today we're going to do this, and sort of talk them through it before they go, mm. uh, I, I tend to find that the better prepared they are in their minds, the less of a kind of shock it is when they actually arrive. I yeah. don't know if that, and that might just be individual to me, but. I think that's really true. Absolutely. I mean, I think also you probably have to repeat yourself many more times than you think you do because yes. the message mm. has to be really reassuring to them, doesn't it? Mm. That's right. Definitely. Yeah. But different children are, you know, completely different, aren't they? Some children make mm. friends really easily and, and some don't. I know this year at my, my children, my little girls' school, they've completely mixed all the children up. There's a two and a half yeah. form entry and she's got a real tight little group of friends and they've just mm -hmm. completely split them all up. 
She's not bothered. Oh, she's not bothered yeah, at all. She great. just she just knows that she'll make friends. Mm, but there's yeah. other children that really would bother them. Yeah, if, if, any of you had problems with kind of friendships breaking and making? Yes, we have here, here and here and here and there with with um, several of, of of the children over over the years have, have had the same problem, but never really lasts for too long. You know, us, us, usually things smooth out. They, they they will find new friends. It can be upsetting to you when you first see them in tears, and and then uh, again you have to try not to let them feel that it's a very strong thing that obviously it's going to get better don't worry reassure them always reassurance always yeah. lots of love and reassurance i yeah. find exactly don't just dismiss it because it yeah really i, mean, I think you, you should take Never it dismiss. seriously the, yeah. the, the problem because to them it's very mm. very real and yeah. it's yes but then you know i think just to say all the time it's going to be all right make it's it kind feel of worse you want them to be mm. able to express themselves obviously yeah. you do mm. offer reassurance and love but you also do want to let them know that you that you're listening yes. and that you know yes. you are that you're trying to understand. Yeah, because I think that that's of part of as they get older, you want them to be able to express how they feel to mm. you, so that you can kind of help them out with things rather yeah. than just saying it's going to be okay, it's going to be okay, yeah. which is kind of a way of, of mm. shutting them up. Yeah. So let them know that that, that that you you're always there for them. Yeah, yeah, you're you're, you're always going to listen. So don't don't bottle it up. Yeah, yeah. It's hard being at school, isn't it? We remember it, don't we? <laughs> it's not always that easy. <laughs> okay, well, just a quick reminder about our competition for your chance to win a year's supply of Start Right shoes. All you have to do is submit a question and let us know whose shoes you'd most like to walk in for a day and why. Remember to leave your name and contact details too. Uh, join us in part three when we'll be discussing shopping for those all important school shoes. <laughs> Now let's talk about shopping for school shoes. I've not done this yet, I have to say, it's on my list of things to do before we go back to school. Um, Janine, you've got four children, a bit That's of a costly right. um, time in your house, shopping yes, for school shoes. it can be. Luckily, the, the, the children's ages are, are quite wide ranging, so um, I, I haven't had them to buy all, all four shoes, for, you know, at the same at time, because yeah, so. it can, because you've got trainers as well for the pee kit. And they're and so expensive. Welly boots, and yes. it's just, oh, it's amazing how much it mounts up, isn't and it? And I, I always find that the, the, the boys have always worn them out much faster. They, 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 they play football, and, and if they're on scooters, they tend to use their shoes as a brake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Lovely. laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, my son wore holes in the toes of his shoes <gasps> Yes. from scooting, yes. using his toe as a brake. <laughs> they're not cheap either, are they? And no, the thing not. is, their feet grow really quickly as well at they a do. young age, don't they? They, they yeah. really do. Um, when's the best time to shop for shoes then? Because I thought, I'll get it done at the start of a holiday, get it all out of the way. And then my friend said, well, what if she grows a size? And mm -hmm. they can, can't they? Yeah, I think, so. I think their feet definitely mm -hmm. seem to kind of jump. They seem yes. to not grow for ages. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, they'll, they'll grow really quickly. Yeah. Um, so when, when do you tend to I do don't, it? I would have thought about two weeks before, mm. a, a week or so before, but I think you want to do it in enough time so that they've got time to wear the shoes a bit, because obviously That's you don't want right. to have that thing where the shoes feel tight and uncomfortable and new when you go back to school, especially for children who are starting for the first time, it's just another mm. thing for them to, you know, to be uncomfortable to be, right, or really to be sort of point, bothered actually, by. Isn't it? Just walk so I think the house just spend a bit of time wearing them at, at home or yeah. whatever. I think if they're, if they're starting school and they're sort of proud of their uniform and everything, then the shoes are part of it, aren't they? So yes. it's quite oh, easy yes. to get them to, to wear them. It yeah, is. definitely. We've had lots of your questions in. Um, maybe you can tweet us as well, if you like. Uh, Mum's half hour. Um, and we'll have another look at some of your questions. Uh, Kath says, my eldest son grew out of shoes very quickly and consequently some of his shoes have hardly ever been worn. It seems mm. such a waste as the shoes still have plenty of wear in them. Can I pass these on to his younger brother or should he have new shoes? Second-hand shoes, ladies. What do we think? Mm. Difficult one, isn't yeah, it? I, I don't know. I, I don't feel like I'd mind. I don't know. I mean, I, I do always get my my children's feet measured properly because I think it's mm. good to have shoes that that they fit properly, fit width properly. fitting, and everything. They do. But I, I don't know. I mean, I, I've never been in that situation because my older son has always worn out every pair of shoes. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Down, yeah. Down, yeah. the sole has just gone. It's a boy yeah. thing again, isn't so it? I'm sort of, you know, I'd love to be in that situation yeah. really to think, oh, I've got some shoes to pass down. But, but the thing is, they've got to be the same size and the same yes. width fitted, so the yes, chances of that are quite slim. And but also, I guess I mean, if you get your child's feet measured yes, and they do turn out to be the right size for the shoes mm. you have, then yeah. why, why wouldn't you do that? Yeah. But if your child hasn't got the same width fitting or the same size, then obviously I don't think you could 
force one child to <laughs> feed yeah. into the That's a wrong bit size, that might be a bit extreme. <laughs> and, and the experts say as well, um, talking to the, the start right experts um, before the show came on, um, they say that basically your shoe moulds to the shape of your foot mm, yes. pretty quickly That's actually. Right. Mm. Um, so it's probably not a good idea to have the same um, pair of shoes as, as someone else. But you know, money is a big issue for people, isn't it? And particularly if, if like um, the, the, the lady who, who um, sent her question, if they've hardly been worn, then yes. perhaps the shoes haven't moulded yes. so much to the shape of the foot. Right. I guess it depends on how little wear they've had. Yes. Mm, yes. I've kept all my, because my daughter's only two, so she's had, she's on her fourth pair of shoes, oh. I can even count them. And obviously they've, she doesn't walk an enormous distance no. so as you say they're not at all That's worn right. so in in the possibility that I'm now having another girl yeah. and I've kept them but then again as you say yeah, who knows who knows she could have really wide feet yeah. And, and, yeah, yeah. and will they be too yeah worn into that shape because I mean That's I know yeah I would I would worry if I was wearing secondhand shoes that they wouldn't fit me because they'd be yeah Exactly. Comfortable for somebody else. Exactly. Walking walk different ways, yeah. don't you? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably worth mentioning at this point that you can view top tips on how best to fit a variety of shoe styles via the Start Right YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Start Right Shoes. And you can also get um, a fitting gauge um, from the website, which is really useful. It tells you exactly how to fit your, your shoes at home, just in case you want to get um, shoes online um, rather than going into the actual shop to get them. Um, although, would you generally go into the actual shop, do you think, and, and get them fitted? I, yes, I think I, I would. would, yeah. Yeah. I've ordered a pair online to be delivered to the shop. Oh, and then okay. fitted it in the shop. And actually that was quite good because they looked wonderful online and we got to the shop and they <laughs> didn't fit in the right place oh, and I ended up getting them a pair. So ah, there you see, the voice of worth, experience. Yes, definitely yes. worth having them fitted properly. Because yes. yeah, as soon as you put them on, I was like, no, they're not going to work out yeah. at all. But then sometimes you can't get the sizes, can you? And I know I've had this problem. My daughter's got very wide mm. feet and I've gone in just before mm. the start of term to get shoes fitted and I've had to go to so many different shops because they sell out very quickly, yeah, don't they, of, they do. of some of the sizes. So it is a good idea to be prepared, isn't it? Very good idea. Um, what about buying cheap shoes from supermarkets versus the sort of proper leather ones from the proper shops? What would you tend to do? I've just done that for the first time and it worked out really badly. Ah, I just bought some really sort of cheap canvas ones because I thought, oh, summer, she might not want to wear leather shoes rubbed her heels ah, and probably two weeks later they're still a bit sore so now I'm really yeah I've been bitten by that and I don't think I'm going to try that again yeah for yeah well there we go I mean, my mum always <laughs> says buy cheap buy twice mm, so there you true. are because you know you have to go and get another pair and the yeah. things with the leather ones that they talked to the experts before the show as well they 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 told us that the dyed through leather really lasts a long time rather than the sort of plastic shoes or the cheaper leather mm. because they do somehow seem to wear the top of their shoes. How do they do that? I don't know. You say your son wears his out on his scooter yeah. and what have you. That's but right. They do yeah, wear they, them out quite do quickly, that. don't they? It's amazing. <clears throat> what about looking after shoes? Who does the shoe cleaning in your house? <laughs> with me, uh, with my house, it's me. <laughs> well done, Mum. <laughs> <laughs> I do, well, I try to do shoe looking after, but I have to confess I'm not very good at it. If they look terribly scuffed, I'll put some stuff on the front. Bit of spit. Yeah. <laughs> but with school shoes, they, they get wrecked anyway, don't they? They wear them every single day, so it's, yes. it's a bit different. You do get your money's worth out of them, don't you? I, I yeah, I think so. I think that's why it's worth spending money on them, because they do wear them every day, and they're wearing them for however many hours it is a day, so yeah. you want them to be comfortable and... Yeah, absolutely. You know, waterproof or whatever it is. Well, that's a good point, actually, because we have had some awful winters, haven't we? And you don't want mm. them, you know, th have having wet thin feet, cold, no, wet feet, and, and thin soles tough, cold, and, feet. and what have you. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, and it, our half hour is nearly up. Um, we've talked plenty about our children, uh, but what about us? How do you guys find that important me time? And how do you find time to relax? <laughs> Any tips? Don't look at me. I don't find it. I don't find it <laughs> very often. I must say, with a two-year-old and one on the way, no. No, you don't Not, find no. much time to relax. <laughs> I'm hoping I'll get some sometime. Oh dear, we had a question in actually on, on similar um, similar topic. Catherine Kendall says, um, "Where do you keep your sanity for the summer? Where's yours hiding?" <laughs> um, if it's a nice day, I like to I like to sit out in the garden and read a book, and yeah. it's it's just just a calming time. And after I finish reading the book, I might even write a little list I'm, I'm, I'm big on lists yeah. so that I, I can keep my, my head organized so even if, if I'm just writing a list I, I can be just sitting in the garden a cup of tea in hand and just it's just chill not do anything else and then I think right time to go and do something else and check tick off my checklist yeah <laughs> Just you know, time for your shoulders to go down. Yeah, yeah I think, I think learning how long. to just have little teeny bits yes. of time to yourself is yes. a slots. really good lesson because you're not going to get that kind of, you know, the lovely long bath or whatever mm, it is. No. I mean, but I, for example, this morning I sat on my own while um, my youngest was doing some beautiful drawing. Mm. Um, 
but I sat and I had a proper coffee and I had toast yeah. and marmalade and it was about five minutes, the radio was on and I had last yes. weekend's newspapers. And I was Absolutely. really like on my own yeah. just for a few minutes, yeah. mm. but everything was lovely. You know, I put a toast rack on the table and all that kind of thing. Yeah. So it was all sort of, you know. That's really, and you little, do have to make definitely. time for, to do these things. And you have to kind of train yourself to do it as yeah. well. Otherwise I think you, you go mad. Yeah. <laughs> I think having the dog has been really good for me because I take her for a walk every morning after oh, um, school, um, after dropping my little girl off. So I have half an hour of kind of thinking, and that's, that's my headspace. You do mm. need some headspace, don't you? You do need that. Yeah, we deserve yeah. it, ladies. We work very hard, don't we? <laughs> we do. <laughs> <laughs> well, time flies when you're having fun and our half hour is up, ladies. So my thanks to Robin, Jessica and Janine for joining us. Um, best of luck to Robin with Thank baby on the way. Uh, you'll be mum of two soon, goodness me. Well, be sure to catch us next time on Mum's Half Hour on Friday the 9th of September, where we will be discussing, amongst other things, all things fashion-related. Quite a hot topic, that one. So remember, if you want to find out more about picking the perfect school shoes, go to youtube.com forward slash start right shoes. Well, enjoy the rest of the summer. Bye for now, and we'll see you next time. Cheerio. <laughs>